Um, let's get into this. Let's take a look. We'll try to watch a few of these different clips, but I think you guys are going to get the point pretty soon here. Um, I think this was on like a members only live stream, maybe for his Patreon community or something like that. But as you guys can see, it's not an actual H3 live stream. He's not in studio or anything. This was like for fans only. Um, so I'm not sure if he could get away with this without it getting clipped and going viral. But either way, someone certainly did clip it and posted it everywhere. So now we're all talking about it. Let's take a look. My first reaction is this. It was absolutely insane how he like stood the whole time. That was crazy. I didn't know how that's all humanly possible. Um, again, not to put this uncouth, but he's a champ at burning a lot. I mean, that sounds bad, but he did it really good. Does that bad sound bad? Yeah. We have to make levity of things. Jesus, that sound bad that he was really good. I mean, but I mean that. A, I mean that as a as a compliment. Um, what the f are you guys angry about, you weirdos? I'm. Li what did I do? My God, stop! They just say all I hear is Ethan. No, but I don't understand what I've even said. Oh, chewing? Yeah, I'll stop that. Maybe they just mean, maybe they just talk about the chewing. Could that be? Yeah, that's probably it. <laughs> Wait, what did I even say that to mean? Like, give me a break. Holy shit. Isn't the guy do it because he wanted people to talk about it? Like, like, that's what I'm doing. My point is this. First of all, I was uh, stunned by the way that he stood through the whole thing. I mean, shit, that was wild. Um, and really showed his result, his true resolve to, to protest in that way. I can only imagine this. Just a horrific way to die. So I'm pretty wild. That being said... <clears throat> I do not believe that it is good for people to be um, romanticizing or encouraging. I know it's not, I know people aren't doing that, but like the way people are romanticizing it is kind of, uh, in my opinion, the man, he killed himself. And I don't think we should ever talk about that issue with any kind of uh, reverence because let's be real. The amount of people online who are talking about it in this like wonderful, this is such bullshit, too, because like there's a very clear difference between committing suicide and doing what Aaron Bushnell did. Like, yes, technically he did kill himself, but it's not like he was just depressed and couldn't live another day. No, he was specifically taking his life in order to make a political statement, in order to try to get a change in policy. Usually if a depressed person or someone dealing with mental health kills themselves, it's it's usually not live streamed online to make a point regarding our foreign policy or our political policy in general as a country. Um, so no one is romanticizing or celebrating just the idea of suicide. Like if you're feeling down, if you're down in the dumps, might as well just blow your brains out like no one is saying that no one is celebrating that and if that's what had happened to aaron bushnell then i think most people would agree that it was unfortunate tragic but definitely nothing to celebrate um just to mourn right the reason why it appears that people are quote-unquote celebrating aaron bushnell's quote-unquote suicide is because he's actually displaying an ounce of the courage that you know a, a lot of the rest of us who want to protest and and make a difference in this regard he actually had the level of courage to take his own life to put himself to sacrifice himself for this cause um and, and you know there's often this notion that protesters don't really have much to lose that they're just privileged people that are standing on the side of the road screaming and virtue signaling and stuff like that aaron bushnell he actually you know sacrificed himself he actually put his life on the line for this cause because it's mean that much to him and because he viewed himself as being complicit in the uh atrocities in israel so i just don't think it's the same thing at all to call it even suicide it has to be a different category altogether in my opinion yeah um i mean we made the comparison to taekwon Zuk, the uh, vietnamese monk who uh, a lot of people think he was protesting the vietnam war he was actually protesting the uh u.s backed uh president of uh south vietnam making it illegal to practice buddhism or any other non-christian religion in public i believe uh but anyway he set himself on fire in protest and nobody talks about the you know recollection of him right jfk talked about it as like you know one of the most moving like news images of all time or whatever we you know we did a whole segment mm -hmm. about it and then it becomes the cover of one of the most seminal protest albums of all yep. time uh the debut rage against the machine record uh were they encouraging people to go out and commit suicide no they said this is what the supreme sacrifice looks like this is what the penultimate 
sacrifice looks like this man set himself on fire you know and i think you know chris hedges you know we've disagreed with him in the past he wrote a really great article about this and he talked about how uh, this was an act of divine violence and i thought at this point it was actually it, it kind of it kind of needed the religious context that he often puts his political analysis is in um, and he writes this. He says, Bushnell's self-immolation, one most social media posts and news organizations have heavily censored, is the point. It is meant to be seen. Bushnell extinguished his life in the same way thousands of Palestinians, including children, have been extinguished. We could watch him burn to death. This is what it looks like. This is what happens to Palestinians because of us. He then also recalls the image of uh, Tikwan Duk uh, in Vietnam in 1963. But anyway, I thought that that was a, a, a pretty dead on way of phrasing it with uh, respect, but also to put it into context. He was forcing us to look at ourselves and what we are doing. And what we are doing is un bearable to watch you know i mean I, I i'll never get that fucking image out of my head and that was the point yep. the point was to always see that fucking cop or is you know israeli embassy guard pointing a gun at his melted body as his as the muscles are falling off of his knee as as he's collapsed to the ground and there's smoke everywhere and that is that that's impossible to unsee you know um yeah, it, it, it is crazy, right? And, and and Ethan digs himself a bigger hole for the people who are yeah. like, wait, what's coming? Oh, we're going to watch. You wait. Well, uh, almost like, I don't describe it. People are, uh, um, trying to where I put it. People are idolizing him. You're going to, more people are going to kill themselves. I mean, that's just a matter of fact. It's just, there's just more people going to kill themselves. I don't think suicide's funny. I don't think it's anything that we should encourage. I think it's pretty much always bad. And while I can appreciate, he's... He's the one that's about to make jokes about it, by the way, after saying that suicide isn't funny. Dedication, I mean, to put it mildly, you know, uh, if I, I can appreciate his dedication um, and his conviction, right? I mean, for not like uh, unbelievable. Self immolation is literally suicide. He killed himself. Sorry, I don't know what that That's another weird dialogue. They go, no, no, no. Everybody goes, yeah, we agree, suicide's bad, get help. But then they go, unless you're doing it for a good cause, then you can kill yourself. Like, okay, no, well, this shut is not up fucking... for a second, Ethan Klein. Because you ever heard of the military? Yeah. Straight up. Do you call every single one of them murderers? No, you don't. You'll be like, oh, well, he was in the military, right? Oh, it was forced conscription in the IDF. Or in the or, IDF, oh, like his wife. That's Yeah, I was going to get there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? And they're like, oh, are, is, your, is your wife an assassin? Is your wife a terrorist? You know, is everybody that's in the United States military a murderer? You know, is that how you would read the situation? Or would you put one of your 10 brain cells together and say, wow, this is actually a different context. This is different than an extremely depressed person that opened their veins in a bathtub. Yeah. yeah. That I, I, wow. I'm capable of looking at context and digesting with reason. Like, come on, bro. Yeah, totally. Totally. I mean, if like, if a truck was barreling towards you and your family and you stepped in the way of the truck to save your family or something would that be i don't know if suicide? i don't know if the guy ethan's size is going to derail a truck <laughs> cabin, but i, you know I appreciate saying, like, the analogy you know the whole like trolley metaphor where it's like if you could sacrifice yourself to save a bunch of people i mean obviously unfortunately what aaron bushnell did is not going to result in an immediate ceasefire it's not going to result in the end of the war in gaza um but again you have to consider it something more than just suicide given his goals given his ambition. He was not just sacrificing himself because, like I said, he was depressed or something. And we don't know the you know extent of his mental health. I have no idea to the extent that he was 100% uh, depressed or not oppressed. Who knows? Who cares? The point is, he clearly was trying to make a sacrifice in the same way that if I were to step in front of a freaking car barreling towards me and my partner to save her, it wouldn't be suicide, right? It would be a, a brave act of sacrifice and an attempt at least to save other people um and, and no one would go around being like make sure you don't do that that's fucking stupid i can't believe he killed himself like, everyone would be like what an absolute hero this man gave his life uh for other people to try to prevent the deaths of others and i think that's probably the closest analogy i can draw to aaron bushnell but times like a million because think about how many people's lives are actually on the line. It's not just a family that a car is speeding towards. It's an entire fucking country. It's an entire fucking country, which is being starved and slaughtered and bombed relentlessly while they try to access the scraps of food that are 
you know, airdropped into their country. Um, if you were in that position, wouldn't you want at least one or two motherfucking Aaron Bushnells to do what Aaron Bushnell did here in America, where we're also privileged and where we have everything? Wouldn't you want at least one person to do what Aaron Bushnell did to make the point that he made? You know, to sacrifice himself for you and your fucking people. Like, of course you would. Of course you'd be praying that at least one motherfucker would do that shit. It's kind of crazy, Gavin. Because I am not a religious guy. We've talked about this a lot. But I seem to be the only one who has drawn the conclusion or looked at, again, the context around all of us. And I'm like, wait. Y'all told me that there were like over a hundred million people of the Christian faith in America a few weeks ago. And that blew my mind because I was like, wait, half the country believes in God. And they were like, no, way more believe in God. Half the country identifies as Christian. And I was like, holy shit, no way. And then I looked it up and it's true. Like a fuckload of people identify as Christian, right? Guys, it's like the most popular religion in America. Okay. I'm not here to lecture these folks, but I think I have kind of a past because culturally people like to describe America as a Christian nation. So let me wax for you guys for a second because you guys are pretty thick in the head. Your entire religion is based off of a guy who sacrifices himself. Sacrifices what? Sacrifices his life for the atonement of the sins of others. It's literally the whole point of the religion. It's the whole ideology is built upon that. They'll be like, he made the ultra and sacrifice. God sacrificed his only son. This is shit you'll hear if you watch movies where one of the characters is of the Christian faith, right? Okay, great. Then they will immediately forget all of that shit in any moment of practice. It's one of the most interesting sociological phenomenons I've ever seen in my entire life because they will just rally and cry and you'll like talk about how you don't believe in God and they'll all start fucking shaking and shivering. And then the second their religion comes into play, like in practice, like you leave them alone to their own devices, it's like it never fucking came up once. These people will go to church once a week and read scripture. I'm just like, I don't know what happens. It goes inside this ear and goes out the other. And then people leave and they just start drinking the wine and fucking. I don't know. But it it, it, it is an interesting phenomenon. I understand that Ethan Klein is, uh, I believe, of the Jewish faith. They don't believe in that. So th it wouldn't be a perfect analogy for him. Uh, but a lot of the other people making this case, I want you to identify that. Because I haven't seen a lot of you other than, uh, you know, Chris Hedges coming out and being like, hey, there's a religious tone to this. I'm sorry. Suicide bad. I don't think we should romance. I haven't seen anyone romance. Are you fucking kidding me? Have you been online? Everybody's glamorizing it. Oh my God. How can you even disagree with me on that? That's crazy. Like the amount of people online who are like, he's a fuck. He's a, I understand why people want to go like, he's a hero. Like I understand that because he made this ultimate sacrifice in the most gruesome way possible. Right. And so I understand the impulse of being like, I don't want that to I want to honor that sacrifice. Monks do self immolation. Yeah, I know. When they're like under tyrannical oppression by the Chinese and have literally no way for the voices to be heard. But, I mean, the Palestinian cause is for sure um, plenty talked about. Oh, it's yeah. plenty talked Sorry. about? It's plenty talked about? Okay, also, I'm going to go off in this idiot. Suicide as a protest is stupid in a free country that has freedom of speech. There are a thousand other ways to protest. This is not it. Instead of talking about Palestine, we are talking about him. I don't know, dude. Can you walk and chew bubblegum at the same time? What the fuck are we talking about with his entire protest model? You're like, I don't know if you need to be galaxy brained. I don't know if you need to feel woke. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Let me reason with you. We are talking about his protest on behalf of his op opposition to the United States Air Force, which he was a part of a member he was an air force uh, airman and the air force is literally perpetrating and aiding and abetting in an ethnic cleansing in the gaza strip right now okay that's what he was protesting he literally said i cannot be a part of this he 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 that was what he was protesting. He was an active participant, okay? I don't know what you need to do to get it through your thick fucking skull that people are dying left and right over there. Yeah, no shit. We're not telling everybody, go outside and set yourself on fire. I did an entire fucking tirade about how we need fighters to be fighting, okay? But what he did 
what he did right there was he upped the ante. He said, oh, you like, you know what I'm saying? He said, this is a dire situation and you cannot look away. We don't know what he saw. We don't know what he knew. He don't, we don't know what had come through the grapevine uh, if, as a member of the Air Force. But we knew that he was like, I cannot fucking be complicit in this. Imagine where he had to be in his heart, in his soul. He had to feel like he was a member of the fucking Nazi party. He had to feel like he was a member of the fucking, you know, the fucking SS. He had to be a fucking, he had to feel horrible about himself, right? Um so that's what he did. That's what he did. He protested uh, a horrible, horrible thing that he himself would have been complicit in. So yeah. shout out to you, Zanaj, but you got to wear and the guns cap. And according to him, American forces were and are complicit in what's going on. Um, this has not been officially confirmed yet, but apparently he claimed to have classified knowledge of U.S. forces fighting in Gaza on the night before setting himself on fire as you guys can see here aaron bushnell claimed he had secret knowledge of u.s troops fighting in hamas tunnels under gaza just hours before setting himself on fire in an extreme act of protest against israel the 25 year old airman who served in air forces 70th intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance wing but had also interacted with radical anarchist groups online lol ranted that he had top secret clearance for military data in the call to his friends saturday night he told me on saturday that we have troops in those tunnels that it's u.s soldiers participating in the killings claimed his friend whose ties to Bushnell have been verified by the post. So obviously we'll wait to find out more information on this. Um, we'll wait for any sort of confirmation if that is going to happen. Obviously, I don't think the U.S. military is likely to say, of course, yeah, that's absolutely what's going on. But who knows? The point is, is that, yeah, this guy had more knowledge of what was happening than any of us do. He probably had seen and heard things that made it very hard to sleep at night, let alone just go about your daily fucking life if you give a shit about other human human beings um, and, and, you know, continuing to go to work where you're aiding in their, in their slaughter. Are you kidding me? Um, yeah. So that's what I would say. Uh, I, I think that also, for, I banned this fucking idiot. Biden has been pushing for ceasefire oh, well. for weeks. We can't reach you. I'm sorry, Zinnar. <laughs> uh, you're you're not banned from watching. You're just banned from commenting because I can't handle you right now. <laughs> Thank you yeah. for the two dollars. Anyway, I think in this specific pro, uh, sorry, in this specific instance, given the role that Aaron Bushnell was playing and the information that he was privy to, I actually think it was a a downright heroic form of protest. Not that I would encourage anyone else to do the same thing, but yeah, let's go into this next clip time. and i think that that's just like can be, mental illness can be present and moral goodness can also be present at the same time and i think that that's just like jesus christ sorry guys at the same time and i think that that's just like i don't understand when people say it, it's it wasn't suicide just because i don't understand the logistics surrounding like the definition of it it's because you're right it is because they're carving out a moral uh uh barrier for themselves to say oh yeah well in this case killing yourself is, is great but it's not that's because it's not suicide. It is, it is. He killed himself. He has family, he has friends, presumably. He has people that are gonna be affected by him leaving the planet in that way. It's suicide. It literally is suicide. He was a service member. Well then did he have any miss did he have any uh, delusion about what the United States military was? The ones that like killed a million fucking Iraqis like a decade before? Why did he join? I think he was mentally ill. I think what you said is right, Olivia. I think he did I think he did something that in his mind didn't hurt anybody and he made the ultimate sacrifice for what he thought was a was a this is such a rich boy a righteous bullshit. cause of paramount importance. Yep. Can you pause it for a second? Dude, why do people join the military? Because they're fucking poor, asshole. Because they're fucking poor and desperate. Oh, oh, why did he go to prison if he wasn't a bad person, huh? Oh, have you ever heard of a country before? Have you ever heard of socioeconomic constrictions? Like, it's maddening, right? This dude's recording this from a mansion in LA. Like, it's like, dude, and he, he dude, what, what, did your wife have any fucking illusions about the IDF when she signed up for that shit? Huh? Did she? And protest that shit no oh well is your wife mentally like what are you talking about bro what are you talking about why did he sign up did they have any illusions about the killing of a million iraqis no he probably was desperate and 17 years old and put his name on a dotted line when they said they would give him health care for the rest of his life and college tuition yeah oh i'll be in the air force because that's the one where you're least likely to get fucking killed oh maybe i'll join the navy but i don't like you know what i'm saying maybe i'll learn how to be a pilot and have a job when i get out of here you know i'll just put my head down for four years 
won't have to do anything bad and then i'll get out of here of course that's misguided of course that's not advice that i would give him he can learn that the hard way bro he learned that harder than anybody else how the fuck are you to lecture him about that shit you know what i mean mentally ill yeah dude the united states fucking military will make you mentally ill if you have a soul if you have a conscience if you are capable of human empathy they will force you to do things that you cannot fucking ration you cannot fucking grapple with they will ask you to sign your name on fucking horrible horrible things and that is why the best among us are willing to sacrifice themselves to remind us of the horrors that we're fucking responsible for as a nation um to you know what i mean uh and of course it doesn't have to come in the form of self-immolation and they keep being intentionally obtuse about this dude do you not understand that thousands and thousands and thousands of palestinian children babies are being mutilated and destroyed as we speak okay so why don't you pearl clutch about that i would like to see you guys spend a lot more of your time talking about how we need a ceasefire now humanizing the people of palestine talking about aid talking about the fact that they were shooting fucking desperate people to get food aid days ago uh you know just mercilessly executing people when we look i want you to look at the fucking photographs of the individuals who have not been able to get food for weeks so they've been living off of liquid uh iv fluid and they look like it's, it's horrifying uh they look like the people who have been liberated from concentration camp because they're so deep into famine uh the way that the babies who are malnourished look uh the thought marinate with the thought while you think about aaron bushnell suffering in pain which is what he wanted us to think about was their suffering and pain think about giving birth to a child under these circumstances having to undergo a c-section bring that child into this world unimaginable pain no medication you're fucking terrified you don't even know if it's moral to bring a child into this fucking world then you're trying to raise it. And then you've got another kid next to you that's screaming and writhing in agony because they have to amputate his fucking leg with no medication, with no medical surprise that's proper. Okay, this is what's going on. Okay, but I don't see you fucking pearl clutching about that. I don't think I don't hear you talking enough about the mentally ill Biden administration because they are signing off on this suffering because they're accelerating this suffering. I don't hear you talking about the siege in Rafa that they're about to fucking completely from the north to the south of Gaza. They're about to have a bulldozed completely. So what Aaron Bushnell did was to force us to continue this conversation, you know, when we are four five months out from the you know invasion when we, it started to go into the back of people's minds he said i refuse to allow that we have to talk about that that's not mentally ill we are mentally ill we are mentally ill as a society that allows this okay and it's not glamorizing the act of suicide this was a serviceman we've talked about how we don't go around calling all the like do you like when you talk about obama do you call him a fucking murderer and assassin no you don't even though you should right that's just not the way that we fucking describe these things this was a political action that was done by a member of the uh you know services the air force that was perpetrating international crimes okay so we have to unpack all of that we have to unpack all of that, okay? And the unwillingness to do so, but then the quick, psh, oh, what? Did he not know about Iraq and the million? Bro, You people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones, bro. People in glass houses shouldn't throw stones, okay? Because I've watched you cape for fucking <laughs> a, a lot of people who were responsible for a lot of bad. A lot of people who were responsible for the fucking, oh, you know, Biden, he's not so bad. Remember when that was your line, Ethan? You know what I mean? But at the same time, I think people need to be absolutely careful with how they fucking put him on a pedestal because you're going to end because more people are going to kill themselves. And I don't think suicide should ever be glamorized, even when a fucking monk does it. And it's like, wow, it should be more like, dude, that's fucking crazy. Um, and it's horrible. Also, it's, it's absolutely about to reveal like, oh, that no one mental health issue. Why the fuck isn't there tons of other people doing it? I'm sorry. You don't set yourself on fire. If he, he's a martyr, Jesus Christ. Some of y'all are lost. I don't know what to say. Some of y'all like sometimes wonders if like I don't know, man. Chat is so he's, fucking weird. He's moments away from calling his chat Hamas. <laughs> yeah, and it's like if someone joins the military and they die in a war, even if it's an unjust war, most people I feel like, including Ethan's response to that, would be like, "That's a tragedy." He's a hero. He gave his life trying to defend the country, even if he, you know, was propagandized into that position. No one sits here and says, what a stupid thing to do. We can't talk about this. We can't celebrate it. Other people are going to do that, too, even though that's actually something that people do. Sign up, enlist for the military, go fight in 
unjust wars and quote unquote sacrifice themselves uh, for this country, quote unquote. Again, as you said, Zach, even though they then come home only to see on the television that the war was all for oil and we were lied into it and that it was all bullshit in the first place. That's what actually happens. This Aaron Bushnell guy, unlike the vast, vast majority of Air Force members, Navy members and, and military members, he actually sacrificed his life for a, a, a real cause. He actually sacrificed his life to, in the attempt to save other people. That's what they tell you happens when soldiers die. That's what they tell you happens when uh, fucking military members, you know, come home in, in caskets, that they sacrifice their life for other people to defend us or others, innocence, freedom, et cetera. That's what Aaron Bushnell actually fucking did. But we can't talk about it because suicide. This is so fucking lame. Yep. People under tyrannical, so Palestinians. No, but there are people whose voices can't be heard. Also, the dude's not even Palestinian. If he was, you know what I mean? Like, nobody in Palestine is like going to the fucking barbed wire fence of the wall and setting themselves on fire. If someone did that, I probably, it'd probably be like, like, wow, that's fucking, like, that, that would hit me maybe harder. Again, not to trivialize it. However, you're, you have to be mentally ill to set yourself on fire. Especially, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Then why aren't, then why aren't people going and doing it? <laughs> There's a billion people talking about Twitter. So why is there a whole fucking, um, Congo, Congo line of people self? So here we go. Really this is, this is, this is where he catches oh, himself so bad. So when he says, oh, okay, well, if you're Palestinian, then you can set yourself on fire. Okay, well, for some reason, that's cr like, oh, you have to be mentally ill to do it. Well, I guess if you're fucking like, so, I, I don't understand. Uh, you can't have human empathy. You can't be like, have solidarity. You can't like feel, you know, you know, there, it, it, it really, he's, he really like slips into like a really like horrible racist trope here of like worthy and unworthy victims. Like, you know what I mean? It, it reminds me of when somebody like talked about like, you know the difference between like americans and iraqis to noam chomsky and you know he like fucking like lashes out he's you, you know what i mean he's like what's the difference between us we bleed when our cut we're cut we cry when our children are killed like you know i'm unaware of any fucking difference between us you know what i mean and so he's like oh well i guess i can understand it like and, and it was a common line that people were saying like he's not even palestinian i tweeted about this the other day you know it's like dude you don't understand you don't understand one we have one globe only one of them we have one earth okay uh and the united states military has its fucking greasy fingers in all of it so if you were a part of the united states military the world becomes like all like the, it's a global operation okay so it, it doesn't really matter what point on the map might as well have been fucking texas do you understand um, uh, so that's crazy. And then as he fear mongers and he pretends to be so aghast at people who even go so far as to talk about this, to go so far as to talk about the political message that Aaron Bushnell was trying to, you know, explicitly force us to reckon with. He's like, why isn't there a conga line of people setting themselves on fucking fire? It's like, bro, you literally just took your own point and you crumpled it up and you threw it in the trash because we are now 100% aware that you don't care about this. You are just trying to make some self-righteous fucking points. You don't want to talk about how this guy saw such horror there that this guy saw. And, and what? Oh, how did he see it? He didn't go there. Yeah, he has a cell phone, bro. It's 2024. We've all seen this shit. We all see this shit every single fucking day if it doesn't make you unwell i don't know what the fuck to tell you i don't know what the fuck to tell you right it, it's like these things will make you sick okay do you not understand that if you send a bunch of people to a war zone that they will come back fucked up that they will come back with post-traumatic stress that they will be fucking anxiety ridden that they're gonna fucking not understand how to regulate themselves in a world where they're not under constant duress that's happening to every single fucking person in palestine as well okay do you understand how that shit fucking works it happens to you as well when you're one a serviceman like aaron uh aaron bushnell was and two when you are exposed to these images you can get PTSD just by looking at shit all day long. Ethan, if you did some homework for once in your fucking life, you might have looked into the studies of the uh, workers at Facebook who are responsible for moderating uh, content on the platform. And all they do all day fucking long, Ethan, is they have to look at images that are really fucked up. And they say, is this allowed? No, it's not. Oh, is this allowed? No, it's not. I'll report this. This looks like child pornography. Oh, this is a beheading from ISIS. Oh, no, I got to fucking block this up. Oh, no, this is just a picture of a family at the swimming pool. This is allowed to go right that's their job all day and then you you give them therapy for a second and you let them talk about their job and you see that their anxiety numbers are through the roost and that these people are also showing signs of post-traumatic stress disorder you can get that through the imagery 
right? So now imagine that you're an individual who feels, you know, culpable for this because you're in the, in the Air Force. You might be forced to go and do this. That's in your mind as you scroll through TikTok and you watch the horrors and you see what's being done. Yes, that will make your brain fucked up. And it forced him to do an unimaginable action. But it's not because his brain chemistry was fucked up. It's because the world is fucked up and the situation around him was fucked up and it led him to do that insane, tragic, and powerful action. Okay? So let's let's just at least call it for what it is. Yeah. I think Fuzzy Slippers made a really good point, too. He had a high security clearance. They screened for mental illness. Um, yeah, Aaron Bushnell was actually fairly high up. That's how he has the or had access to this classified information about American troops fighting in Gaza, participating in the genocide with boots on the ground. Um, so, well, certainly he was, you know, probably unwell as many people are, especially people that serve in the military from the PTSD aspects of uh doing this for a job and being, you know, bombarded by information and images. Um, this is not like some crazy lunatic. No, he wouldn't have got the job in the first place if he was genuinely deranged um, to have that job in the first place and receive that level of classified information. There's pretty extensive psychological evaluations. Fortunately, there's not for the United States president, but there is for a guy like Aaron Bushnell. So, yeah, not like we're just talking about some demented fucking person on the side of the road screaming. On fire. If he, he's a martyr, Jesus Christ. Some of y'all are lost. I don't know what to say. Some of y'all like sometimes wonders if like. I don't know, man. Chat is so fucking weird. I agree. Yeah, if, if he's not a martyr, then I don't know what the definition of a martyr would be. I mean, when we talk about people like freaking Joan of Arc, for example, someone else who supposedly sacrificed himself to make a point. Obviously, you mentioned Jesus Christ, Zach. Uh, some of the most famous sort of heroes throughout history are people that did very similar things. Uh, so I, I just don't understand what this refusal to comes from. I, I think it has to be an ideological reason, right, Zach? I have a strong feeling that if Ethan Klein had agreed with Aaron Bushnell, if he had been more sympathetic to Aaron Bushnell's ideology as it relates to Palestine, that being that we should free Palestine, I have a feeling that Ethan Klein would agree that this man is a hero, and he wouldn't be out here labeling him as mentally ill. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Oh, for sure. Yeah. And for some proof... To that extent, let's take a look at this uh, other clip recently from H3. I think this was from just the other night. This yeah, was I think really this odd. Was last night. Yeah. Talking about Zionism. And here, Ethan basically conflates anti Semitism and Zionism, which of course is anti Semitic. <laughs> let's take a look. I'm going to say this because it pissed me the fuck off. And being an anti-Semite openly and proudly is now likes on Twitter. Rogan, she tweeted out, she goes, my Zion, I have a problem with my, uh, with my Zionist therapist. Just call him a fucking Jew. I'm sorry, but that, you can't talk like that about any other fucking minority. I had a problem with my Zionist therapist. So sorry if it's a little low on volume. I have it turned up as far as it can go. But it's it's hilarious how he's saying that Zion, being a Zionist is a minority. Like you're in the minority if you're a freaking Zionist, which isn't even true, I feel like. I feel like Biden's being a, on TV calling himself yeah, a Zionist every day. Exactly. Our president is a proud, self-identifying Zionist. It's like the mainstream position. Try going on CNN or MSNBC and, and saying that you're not a Zionist or that you're an anti-Zionist. They're going to freaking... They're gonna freaking attack you. Um, so I don't understand that. Be a Catholic, like a devout Catholic, right? Exactly. Just like Joe and Biden supposedly is. Biden is supposedly our first uh, or our second or something yeah, Catholic first president. Since Kennedy, right? And uh, he's a proud Zionist. Lots of people identify as Zionist who are in no way connected to the Jewish religion, neither religiously nor culturally. Like I could be a Zionist. Anyone could be a Zionist. Um, so off the bat, this is just a dishonest. Literally argument. everyone that's ever made it to the executive branch of our government. Yeah. <laughs> what you taught your Zionist therapist? Did you get that those level of details from them? 
You 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 had an in-depth conversation about the politics of Zionism with your therapist? No, I know what you mean. You mean fucking Jew. You know, I'm not going to sit here and be let my fucking people, you know, be openly bigoted and racist. Fuck that shit. <laughs> Which is, again, hilarious because Zionism is a inherently bigoted and racist ideology. And again, it has nothing to do with being Jewish. You can be Jewish and anti-Zionist. There are lots of Jews who hate and oppose Zionism. Why? Because it makes their religion look terrible. Zionism is taking Judaism, is taking the Torah and using it to excuse apartheid, ethnic cleansing, and genocide. If you were Jewish, would you want your religion being used to justify ethnic cleansing, mass displacement, apartheid, and genocide? No, of course not. Because that's not what actually Judaism is about. Most of you who know Jews in your real life know that they're not genocidal people. They're not racist people. Of course not. Judaism has nothing to do with that. That's why it's thoroughly appropriate to be anti-Zionist, because it's a recognition that this is a bastardization of this religion. This is using a real faith to justify horrors. It's crazy. It's ridiculous. Too. It's crazy too, because the same people who will panic about this, right. Um, you know, are the same, like, it, it's like the Donald Trump administration, right. It, it is, it's like Mike Pompeo is like one of the like four most Zionists in America. You know what I mean? Like I know far more people who are intensely Zionist that are like non-Jewish for sure than I know. Like I don't, I don't in my real life, I don't think I know a single like Jewish person that would identify as a Zionist. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I just don't know anybody that's like, yeah, I'm super pro like, no, like that's just, I mean, again, I'm in a bubble, like I'm a lefty guy, like, you know what I mean? But like, I just, <laughs> I, I mean, I've been to the, you know, Palestine protests, seen a lot of people with the not in my name signs, you know what I'm saying? Yep. So anyway, that's, that's one thing, you know, you put, put like a pin in it and then you're like, do you not remember all of the tiki torch motherfuckers? Jews will not replace us. Jews will not replace us. Those are the dudes that love Donald Trump. And who does Donald Trump love? Bibi Netanyahu, the world's number one Zionist. So it's just like, come on, bro. This is such like a fucking thinly veiled attack. This is bullshit. This is what I expect from the New York Times.